Yes. Okay. Um, just a very quick um, housekeeping on the hackathon that this is a session of the decentralized identity foundation hackathon i am dropping the links mm -hmm. in the chat so you do need to register on discord to officially be part of the hackathon that's where you will submit that's also where prize money will be distributed i've also dropped the discord in the chat there is a channel for this challenge with netsys um, and also, since it's not possible for us to fit every detail of all challenges on dev post, we do have an info site, which you can go to to find everything. And so that's also been dropped um, in the chat as well. Um, so today we are joined uh, by Nick Price and Alex Bainbridge, who are going to review the Netsys Hospitality and Travel Challenge. So I'll just leave it to you guys to go ahead and, um, and take it away. Sure. Well, hello, um, Andrea and Shelby. I see we have Doug Rice in the call, and we have Alex and myself, as well as you here, Vimari, to answer any questions. So um, let me just introduce the challenge, if I can. And it's great to see some interest. Um, so overview, explore and how decentralized identity technology combined with traditional travel tech, can help make travel more enjoyable and rewarding for everybody. And hopefully I'm going to explain what that actually means and how to un un unpack it. But to do that, what I want to do is set the stage just quickly and um, try and illustrate to you why this challenge has a specific focus. And I'd like you, if you're old enough, to sort of think back 30 years and imagine you were going to a destination. And 30 years ago, most likely what you would have done, and I call this, um, well, the, 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 this is the paper, paper ticket age. You would go to a travel agent and you'd say, I want to go to this destination. I want to spend this time. These are the kind of things that I want to do. And that travel agent would tell you to come back in a week or so. And then when you did, would hand over a set of documents to you, a paper folder with everything in one place, everything that you need, give you an itinerary and explain anything that you needed to know and send you on your way. And if you were a regular traveler, you'd be using that travel agent, that travel agent would know as well your likes and dislikes and would use those that information to be able to help uh, through the choices and selection of the um, travel products that were, were purchased for you. Today, we're in a different age and we're in the age of traveler as travel agent. And what does that actually mean? Because it sounds like we're in control. What it means is if you're going to go to a destination, um, and you're going to travel anything more than one night, um, more than likely you're going to be downloading multiple apps or trying to find the, the, the apps to download, downloading them, and then entering into those apps basically the same information time and time and time again. And importantly, what happens is that none of that information that you enter into any one app makes its way to any other um, app. So it is a very, very um, rigid and um, friction-filled environment. And it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a loss, actually, for the traveler. It's a loss for the travel providers in the destination. And it's a loss for the destination themselves. So um, decentralized identity technology, we know. We don't think anymore. We know. Um, offers a real opportunity to effectively address these problems. If you've been watching um, the, the evolution of the of decentralized identity technology over the last few years, and you've seen it uh, applied to travel, what you'll typically have seen is um, it applied in the areas of border crossing and improved airline airport experiences. And most of that is around secure ID verification um, 
and, and access. And while important, and it is hugely important, it's not enough. It's not enough. And why is it not enough? Well, if you think if you're going to a destination, to cross a border, you'd have to travel internationally, first of all. And if you do fly to that destination, you typically only go, you fly once there and you fly once when you get out. But you're in that destination for a, a long period of time, possibly. And you're, you're interacting with travel providers, hotels, tourism, uh, ground transport, and airlines and airports throughout your, your, your journey. And it's really how to make that interaction continuous and beneficial for everybody that we're really focused on right now. So we, we have taken a, a purposely broader view of the technology opportunity in front of us beyond secure border crossing, beyond airline and airport. And we want to, we want to see the opportunity for this technology explored in the broader destination, um, which is the reason for travel. We travel to go somewhere. It could be for work, to for a conference. It could be to see a, a multiple clients, or it simply could be on vacation to a new destination. Think of yourself in that, in that situation and the kind of things that you would like to see with, these, uh, with this technology. And for that uh, end, we've decided um to use um to to have one particular requirement um and that is that a profile is to be used a traveler profile is to be used to specify traveler personal data and preferences and importantly these this information about the traveler can be self attested by the traveler themselves it doesn't necessarily have to come from a third party and that's an important consideration. So a profile is to be used. If you don't have a profile, you can use a profile from otura.me. And I'll be handing over to Alex in, in just a, sec a second because um, otura.me has uh, very kindly offered to provide a traveler profile where you will be able to find profile and preferences for the traveler, and also DIDCOM services to allow communication with the traveler in motion. Alex, over to you. So good morning and um, welcome. I'm actually living the dream. I am at an airport, San Diego airport. So if you can hear background noise, this is not me faking a travel journey just for this presentation. Mm -hmm. This is actually me traveling. Great. So. Um, I'm going to share some screens, if I can, work out how to do that. Um, we'll see if this works. Oh, it's not going to work. Okay, never mind. So I'm going to put a, <laughs> I'm going to put a link into the... Uh... Do you want me to, to show the slides, Alex? Yeah, no, it's all right. No, I've got a web address that I'm just going to put. So I'm just going to put a link straight into the chat for the... Um, for, for where you need to start. So look in the chat now, everyone. And that link is where we have our profile information. So on that page, we've fundamentally got two services that are useful here. We have a preference service and a location service. So preference service enables, if you know what consumers did, then you can access for example, people's accessibility needs, like do they need a wheelchair? Do they have, are they hard of hearing? You can access their food preferences, such as are they vegetarian? Do they have any allergies? Um, you can also think about some of the preferences relating to enhanced service. So what is their favorite post-sport drink, for example? Uh, that, that kind of information. So we have these services and all you need to know is a consumer's did. If you know what consumers did, you can access their preferences. Now, our app, which is called Autora Connect, is it issues consumers a um, a did which 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 has the right format. At the moment, this format that we're using is our own proprietary format. But we, as the um, hospitality and travel SIG, as part of DIFF, 
we're working on a cross industry standard. So eventually the vision is that we're all going to have the same shared preference standard. So you will have multiple hosts of these preferences and any individual consumer can choose which host they want to use for um, to store those and store that information. So let me just talk. I'm just going to do a very quickly talk you through the process as to how we get a, uh, a let's say whether or not someone needs a wheelchair from a did if you know someone's decentralized id you can look up their did document that's step one that will come you can use the uh decentralized identity uh, you can use the decentralized identity foundations universal resolver try saying that in the morning um and you can uh and within that document we will list different endpoints for different the different services now these endpoints are specific to that user and they're time limited and the reason why we do that is because for example you might be going into a restaurant or you might be staying at a hotel that if you're going to a restaurant you might want that did to only be live for four hours and if you go to a hotel you might want that did to only be live for seven days and so by by having these short time limited uh, ids this enables us to maintain privacy by design over time so that once you've interacted and you've left that hotel, uh, they've no longer got access to your information and you know, you've, you've severed that connection in, in a nice way. So, so yeah, so I'm here. Um, we, uh, we, we use did web. We've also got on our platform uh, some example TBD code. Um, so you can use our example code and that, what that will do is it will issue a did, for example, if you can pretend to be a hotel or you could pretend to be an airline or you could pretend to be a, a restaurant. And you could use those dids that TBD issue to access the autora.me dids that we issue. Um, and we've got example code in GitHub to make that nice and easy. If you are a Vue, Vue or a JavaScript developer, we made that easy. Um, yeah, so I'm... So that was kind of my brief introduction. I'm going to be in Discord. I'm always in Discord. So I will be in the uh, Hackathon Discord channel. Ask me any questions. And, um, uh, you know, I I'll be around to help. Alex, one other thing that we could probably uh, mention is why Didcom is important. Yes. Right. So... I, I mean, I believe in a, in a vision where, I mean, as you travel, you engage with multiple services, very many services. So you could engage with, you know, 10 different services in a day, perhaps maybe just two or three for staying uh, static in a hotel. But you but how do you open a channel of communication that you can then open and close ad hoc? So the way that we've done it is we use Didcom as our mechanism to do that. And the reason why we like using Didcom is because it is free text and free text communication would not have been the, 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 the communication mechanism of choice five years ago. But now with AI, you, you can create a service that creates a free text message that sends in one direction and, the, and, and in return, you can receive a free text message. And AI is now perfectly able to handle free text message mm. communication. And that is something that we would not have been able to do before the sort of the LLM uh, revolution that happened a couple of years ago. And that means that a consumer can engage and, for example, send a, a Didcom message in German and the restaurant platform that is only dealing in French will be able to understand it and reply back in German, for example. And that sounds that sounds great. So it's an opportunity to explore the AI re uh, revolution, which is tremendously beneficial but there's one um there's one other fundamental benefit and then again everybody's a traveler you all you all know this so when you book something whether it be an airline or a, or, a, or a hotel or a taxi or something what then happens how you, you you may have days or weeks before you arrive and you're typically in this dark period where you yeah. don't hear a darn thing from anybody um if you do get anything it'll be an email if you get an email and that'll probably end up in junk and it'll be in, in your spam folder. What a wasted opportunity. What a wasted opportunity. You've had hours, days, weeks when you could 
have a meaningful dialogue. And think about it the other way, not just from the traveler, but think about the travel provider, right? The hotel or the taxi company or the or the or the tours, tours and tourism um, people. Just giving them the opportunity to be able to meaningfully and effectively talk to you without having to use an email or go out of band into WhatsApp or something like that, where, which is may or may not work, um, is hugely beneficial, hugely beneficial. And it's something that our industry, desperate, our set of industries for hospitality and travel desperately, desperately need because using that time prior to arrival and using the same technology when you're there to be able to continuously engage with, with, with the customer and just simply have a trusted dialogue with them and hopefully build some, some mutual benefit and some transactions over the top of the DigCom services, that's the way that Alex is discussing, um, would be massively beneficial. So don't think about profile and preferences, but also think about continuous communication yep. and what benefit uh, the two of them together can bring. And, and, and over time, um, there is the next phase of the AI revolution, which is AI agents. And AI agents can handle those communications on behalf of the consumer, or if the AI agent is on the side of the, uh, <clears throat> the vendor, can handle those communications on the half of the hotel or the restaurant or the mm -hmm. airline. So you, so not all of these messages need to be necessarily aimed at the consumer. They can be aimed at the consumer's AI agent. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet in terms of how the whole industry is going to be structured, and we may not be there for a while. But this is the early sort of stages mm -hmm. of how this uh, how this whole new architecture of the industry is coming together. Great. So to to wrap that up. Um, what I would say is there are there are two sides to tr hospitality and travel with respect to this technology. One way you can look at it is transactional. I need to send a piece of, of information to get something back. The other one, the other way is to say, I want to provide some information just simply because it'll help shape downstream. Um, and I often use the term, this is me. And this is what I want. And it's very difficult to wrap a transaction around that, but it's absolutely the bedrock of, of travel. So, 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 so the, the, the range of opportunity for how you could use these preferences goes from the very simple walk into a bar or walk into a cafe through to the more complex journeys such as sort of airport experiences, flight experiences, uh, the, whole trip, the whole trip. Um, you know, so so if you're not completely familiar with the tourism sector, then you can probably start at the simpler end of the scale. And if you are familiar, then we'd love you to take on the more advanced challenges. Um, but so an example of a, a, a simplistic solution might be you walk into a cafe and in some way you share the did and that your did. And actually, that's the hard part which requires a bit of innovation um, is, is, you know, we, we know. For example, I drink a uh, cafe latte, but I just want to say, please get me a coffee. And the cafe latte turns up because the cafe latte is inferred from my preferences that that's what I want, even though I've only asked for coffee. Yeah. That's kind um, of simple service we can do. Obviously, we hope if you're if you're in the running for the prizes, you're probably going to have to do something a bit more complicated than that. However, that is at a very basic level, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of thing that we can do. Yeah, and if you uh, if you were, for example, a vegetarian, um, just to, a simple example, tell your 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 restaurant that you're a vegetarian, so you only get a vegetarian menu. But what about your hotel? Your hotel can also yeah. know that you're a, you're a vegetarian. And the important thing here is, in today's world, to do that, you would need two completely separate interactions, two two apps, two accounts two profiles on the restaurants and the hotels services. Here, 
with the traveler as the holder of information. This information belongs to the traveler. The profile is the traveler's. So what we want to see is enter that information once and use that information as many times as you wish along the travel journey. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Sorry, Alex, but do you have anything else? No, I was just going to say that the, that this is this is um as I said the Autora profile is is proprietary but this is the early uh this hackathon is going to show us all how interesting um this profile can be used in interesting ways and then when we do have the new decentralized identity foundation profile um out and about and then adopted at travel industry scale we should be seeing this um at a great scale and it, that will be that will be so useful. So this is this is early, but let's go for it. <laughs> right. Do we have any questions from anybody? I have a quick question. Hello, um, Andrea. Hello. So for the profile that you just referred to, is that um, the one that is published in the Autora docs, or do you, is there any other published version of it that can be leveraged? Okay. So first of all. The the use of the Autora profile is for your convenience, if you wish. It's not mandatory. Yeah. You can use any any other profile that you wish. Yeah. Yeah. So so but, we, but it's a great profile if you want to use the Autora one. Yeah. So our profile works and the, and it's easy for you <clears> to set up, and you can also as a consumer adjust your own settings. So you can say, hey, I'm vegetarian. So you can then develop and make it easy to see what it would be like if you were a vegetarian using your whatever service you've built um so it's it it's all there okay thank you ping ping me an email or come to the um diff um discord if you've got specific questions on it yeah obviously good, thank you obviously got questions here now but uh, i'm also in the discord <laughs> any other questions No, nope, I don't think so. Limari, I think we're we're done. Okay. And so and I should just I should just just also introduce um, Doug Doug Rice. So Doug, Alex, and myself are uh, longstanding members of the uh, Diff Hospitality and Travel Special Interest Group. And um, Doug and Alex have played uh, major roles in the development so far of the uh, Hospitality and Travel Sig uh, Traveler Profile. Which is work in progress, but it's uh, it's making uh, significant headway. And the Otora profile is a, a sort of an echo of what the uh, the hospitality and travel sig profile will be. Awesome. Also, this recording will be made available, so there will surely be more questions that come as people get a chance to review it. And this will be available both in the Discord channel and in the recordings yep. channel. Yeah. i just make one final comment, which is you don't need to register with Autora to make this work. Due to the decentralized nature, this just works with, if you get if you have uh, the right, you need a did as a hotel and a restaurant, which you can get from TBD, and you need a consumer did, which you, which you can get from uh, our app, but in general terms there's no registration and it just works so that's this is meant to be an open access platform for uh that otherwise that would that wouldn't work on a seamless travel perspective unless it was open so we are an open platform very good and alex and i will be in the discord if needed happy to happy to engage Awesome. Okay. So if there are no other questions, then we will wrap it up for the day and then uh, we can move over to discord to continue the discussion. Um, if anyone has any further questions and then we'll have the recording available probably in about 30 minutes. Okay. Very good. Thank you all. Looking all right, forward to seeing some great, great challenge solutions. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank bye you. everyone. Have a nice trip, Alex. <laughs> <laughs>